Welcome back to OPL Sunday. My name is Michael Hingsing, and I'm joined here by Choo Choo's and also Carbon at the analyst desk. You've taken his thing. You've taken his thumb. If you're just you joining us, you my thumb. <laughs> if you've taken, if, you know you've, if you've just joined us, uh, Darwin was too strong for TM, uh, taking them down 2-0 in that first match of the day, despite a kind of a bit of a second game uh, show of life, yeah. sign of life from uh, from TM. But now we get into this uh, gauntlet rematch from last split. Potential third or fourth deciding match uh, for the placings of the gauntlet. It is Chiefs versus Sin Gaming. And uh, I don't know if you saw some uh, some of the Sin social media, but they said they would be disappointed if they if they lost this series. I think the Chiefs, though, would, would also be very, very disappointed if they lose this series. Definitely. Um, Sin, obviously, won last split against them in the gauntlet. Yeah. But this is no longer a best of five. No. This is a best of three. And in that best of five last split, they went down 0-2. They did. Mm. So it would have been, a, been, a, been a clean 2-0 if that was yeah. best of three in the gauntlet. The old quick 20. The quick 20. <laughs> yep. Uh, not today, though. I don't yeah. think so. I think it'll be three games. All right. I reckon yeah. I'd be surprised to see a 2-0 today. Well, one of the big changes from that, that, that best of five series they played in the Gauntlet through to now is Sin have obviously changed their top lane at Docklin. Now, he had a bit of a shaky start yep. into the first part of the split, but they went away to Rift Rivals. And then while they were away at Rift Rivals, Juve said on camera, look, hey, no one can doubt Docklin anymore. And he's going up against Swiper yesterday, uh, sorry, who yesterday Destiny doubted. But Swiper mm. popped off. Absolutely popped off. Big sweeps. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, look, I'm not sure about uh, what you've said. I mean, I think um, Dockler can definitely still be questioned. I think any player can be questioned, just <laughs> quietly. But uh, Dockler specifically, I think, can be questioned. I think um, he did have a decent performance at Rift Rivals. But mm, yeah. since coming back, I think uh, kind of one of his major weaknesses has kind of been, uh, like, I don't want to say exposed, but you can kind of tell uh, what the issue is when Sin loses. And I think that that is Dockler being um, very inconsistent with his split push pressure. He likes to play split pushes. Like, you know, he's got a thousand games on Jace or whatever, mm. two thousand games on Fiora, but he Six doesn't thousand seem games on Camille. Oh, okay. <laughs> but he doesn't seem to know when he can push and when it's uh, too dangerous to push. It's essentially, he hasn't developed that competitive edge that you translate from solo queue to competitive. Yeah, it's um, like the macro. He, like he understands how to split push. He plays Fiora a lot. He plays yeah. Jace a lot. Play the champion, but he doesn't. He hasn't, un he hasn't brought that understanding to a competitive field. Well, it doesn't look that way anyway. It doesn't look that way. Um, he didn't really prove it in uh, in Rift Rivals. So they have put him back on... They've, they've moved his picks to Gragas and Renekton. And those champions, to me, kind of tell that... Don't die. Just our bot lane mm. will carry. You just need to stop the bleeding. Like Swiper, looking very good coming yeah, off yesterday's performance. Um, put him on the Renekton. Doesn't really have any bad matchups. Has nah. self-sustained. Yep. Gragas as well. Um, that's what they're really looking for with Dokla. So when you're talking about that top lane, though, one of the things we did see last split, and I know we've talked about this before, is that Jubes was giving a lot of resources and a lot of time to that top lane. He's since rotated. He's playing a lot more towards the bot lane. And this FBI rogue bot lane are going up against EGM and Raze. Raze, yeah. open brackets, perfect player, close brackets, <laughs> uh, by his own admission. So, I mean, let's talk about that. Raze and EGM versus FBI and rogue, because... That's a that's a spicy matchup in the bot lane, Choo Choo's. Yeah, they're actually so similar. As, as you can see in the recent champion picks, Zaya um, also raised a big Jin player. Um, the biggest thing, <laughs> actually have the exact same KDA. Um, <laughs> the biggest thing that I'd like to highlight is the kill participation. Um, yeah. FBI's is that's so big, high, yeah. is yeah. so high, and that just shows how hard he carries. Yes, like this bot lane how for Sin. How important he is, is to their win can be. Like, yes, mm. he, he is getting all the kills. And the reason for that is not because, I mean, he is good, but it's not because he's just like insanely 2v2 kill every game, he's 10 and 0, like that's not happening. It's more that kills aren't happening if he's not there. Yeah. And so I think while he is, like being a win condition for your team is both a good and a bad thing, right? Like he is incredibly good. Um, their bot lane is on form at the moment, but the fact that what it looks like is that he has to pop off if they're going to win. Yeah, mm. it does. Um, Rogue, very similar kill participation same to thing. FBI. It's very yeah. similar, 73, 70%. You can see that these two are very good at sticking together and um, it just emphasizes really how much, the, yeah, I guess pressure that much, these... And these, influence these guys yes. have over Sin and their decision making. I mean, you touched on it there. Um, last split, Ju spent a lot of time holding Flair's hand. Um, Flair's often repaid him pretty well yeah. uh, with like solo kills and whatnot, but they've kind of completely changed their team identity in the off season. They've gone from top centric to bot centric almost immediately. Um, you can see Rogue and FBI on screen here. I expect them to get a, a good matchup in the draft today. I expect yeah. Bensel, who was standing behind them to, to treat them well. Um, mm. But on the other side of the pitch, uh, you've got 
Ray's in Egypt. Ray's in Egypt, who uh, are no slouches. <laughs> very good performance route. yesterday. Played very well yesterday. Egypt definitely had a great um, And here they are right now getting yeah. ready. Sorry to cut you off there. Right. Let's go through the Chiefs lineup as we get into this first game. The top laner is Big Swips. Never doubt. Never doubt. Uh, <laughs> oh, Spooks, their jungler, is wearing the gloves again today. Bad situation. Um, I think someone was uh, describing it as pretty thick, but you know, maybe <laughs> got grip on the, on the palms. Um, we got the sweaty palms. Uh, sweaty. Swiver palms is sweaty. their mid laner. And their bot lane, who already spoke about, is made up of Ray's in AD carry and Egym, their support player. And uh, do you think there's a clear favourite, Ray's and Egym versus FB and Rogue? Best best bot lane in O's? I mean, Aaron's. Uh, I, 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 I'm, Aaron's I'm a controversial openly, one. I, I would openly say that Sin have the best bot lane. Um, sorry, Tim, but <laughs> I don't play bot lane. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll that that does. <laughs> doesn't upset me. <laughs> yeah, but like, th these guys have shown so much improvement recently. All right, well, lane, speaking though. of the Sid bot lane, let's take a look at their lineup, shall we? Their top laner is Doctor, the North American import. Their jungler is Juve, 600 IQ, best Canyon O's by his own uh, estimation. Typing in the pregame lobby there. <laughs> their mid laner is Rioma, and their bot lane, who we just spoke about, is FBI and Rogue in support. Whoa. This is going to be an absolutely killer matchup. So let's get your guys' predictions. Uh, Choo Choo's, who is going to win this match? Oh, okay. Um, I. Oh, it's going to be three <laughs> games. It's going to be three games. I will give it to Chiefs. All right. I feel like Chiefs are starting to get back into their old form mm -hmm. and they warmed up. They played played a game yesterday. Yeah, they did. They warmed up yesterday, but. Sin are kind of a cheesy team. Mm -hmm. I feel like they'll have one win, but then Chiefs will come back and take that. Carbon take thoughts? the series. Obviously, uh, you have a vested interest in uh, in both of these teams uh, losing. So yeah, yeah. So <laughs> no, I think uh, I agree with Aaron. I think uh, Sin are very good at coming uh, quick out of the gate. I think they're like yeah. a very. Um, I don't know if nerves don't affect them or if nerves play them pl make them play more aggressive, but mm -hmm. they're they just they they play very fast league, and so I think um, in this game one we're going to see them kind of burst out the gate. Jews would maybe try something level three, or we might see like an all in in the bot lane. Um, so I think the first game will probably go to Sin because I think Chiefs this split have been slow starters. Mm -hmm. um, I think. I'm going to disagree with Aaron just for the sake of it uh, and say that the stinky Chiefs are going to lose 2-1 to Sin. Um, but right. uh, it's going to be a very close match, yeah. I think. Let's take a look at your tips as well, opltips.com.au. And almost a third of people thinking that Sin can take this, but the vast majority of people thinking Chiefs are favourites. But everyone, almost 70% uh, of people, or just over 70, I should say, saying that it's going to be a three-game series. Oh, hotly contested. It will be. Yeah, tweet at us your questions about the series and more importantly, uh, more, more specifically, I should say, about mid lane. And I'll uh, pose them to our analysts during our analytical breaks. But for now, it is time for us to get into our second match of the day as Chiefs take on Sins. Let's throw it to your casters, Spawn and Fish. Hey guys, I'm Tim Carver Weddle. Joining me is Jake Spawn. So we're about to get into this. <laughs> up, thing is out of control. <laughs> uh, I have a different opinion of this game, so I actually want to be serious for the first time of the night, Fish, and shut you up for a second. Uh, I think that both of these teams are incredibly emotional at the moment. I think that Sin have got really hot-headed players, and Juves has openly said it that he's the calm person on this lineup, which for me terrifies me because if anyone has ever met Juves, he is not a calm person. Thought you being serious. And I think that the Chiefs are you know, actually more emotional than those cold-hearted League of Legends machines than we've seen for the last three years. I think that whoever wins this game one will win this series, and I think that this is probably going to be the most important game one. The other thing is, just to point out quickly, Sin, uh, Legacy wants Sin to win this game because Legacy will not play Chiefs or Direwolves again this split until they get into Gauntlet. Mm -hmm. If Sin win this game, then they're going to do what Legacy kind of did and beat the Chiefs. And then if Sin beat them on the when they go back into group stage, Sin have a legitimate chance to, you know, be one of the teams that can upset the top of the table. Uh, so if you're a Legacy fan, you want Chiefs to win, and then all you have to do is keep winning as the split progresses. Yeah, make sure the gap stays even wide at the top of the table, which yep. is good for them. Uh, historically, in Super Week, Sin has done well against the Chiefs. They certainly have. In Super <laughs> Week, Sin has absolutely pummeled the boys in blue. Uh, absolutely taking it to them. I don't think the Chiefs have beaten Sin in the regular season during a Super Week in three splits, Fish. I mean, who did Chiefs play this time round for the two Super Weeks? They played Legacy, they played Sin. Direwolves. No, not Direwolves. Uh, AV. AV. So they thankfully, one and one. thankfully have broken their complete loss streak in Super They used Week. to play Abyss and Sin. They used to lose against both of them for some <laughs> weird reason. 
Uh, but let's see if that's going to happen here today. Already the bands have come through. Zach, Nah, as well as Elise, banned out by Sin. With Jace, Thresh, and Rakan banned out by the Chiefs. Maokai instantly locked in by Swiper. Yeah, I like this because uh, they mentioned Renekton and how there should be a little bit of priority from Dokla uh, on that champion. Nah is the hard counter to Renekton. Uh, although ZZZ showed us with Blade of the Rune King, anything is possible. <laughs> uh, I think that this is a good matchup uh, now for him to be able to take that a little bit blind. Sin to pick up Zaya. With Sorry. Caitlyn still on the board, this is risky. I think Caitlyn is still a good matchup against Zaya. 4D chess player Jews hovering the Wukong there. <laughs> Choguff does get locked in though. A champion that has been banned a couple of times. We thought it's going to be very powerful, but it's only picked in certain situations. Certainly is. I think that you can take the Gragas <laughs> here, potentially, uh, if we try and keep it a little bit more serious. Boys. So Gragas as well as Maokai would be a good flex either way. Uh, I don't know what's more funny, these Wukong hovers or Spook's fingerless gloves. He gets really cold hands and he's a fingertip player. And what I mean by that is if you ever he's watch Spooks hold a mouse, Aww. he does not hold much with his palm. He's the claw. Um, so he is a claw man. So yeah. I, don't, I don't think it really impacts it. It's not good for your wrist, but oh well. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kogmore has been locked in for the Chiefs. Yep, so if anyone's been watching Razor's solo queue, they should not be surprised by this pick. Whilst he hasn't picked it up in the OPL yet, Fish, uh, he is a massive Kogmore fan. Fourth item, Black Cleaver. Uh, not Black Cleaver, Frozen Mallet. Frozen Mallet, Frozen ah, Mallet. Uh, okay. We'll keep the Cho'Gath at maximum distance. Get a couple of points in the E as well. Means that he can't really get on top of you. Mm -hmm. And outrages Zaya, so it's a pretty good laning phase. Chiefs will lock in Galio as their next pick. And Trundle has been picked up by Sin. And this is funny, right? Because everyone talks about Trundle in tank meta. And I agree that he is good against a tank. I disagree that Trundle is good in a tank meta, unless he's the top lane. He's fantastic at split pushing to the ends of the earth and, you know, making sure that you can apply pressure. He wins a lot of the tank metas. As a support, I don't really like him all that much, Fish, because he makes one person squishy. But that tank then kind of just tags out for a couple of seconds, and then the other four tanks run into the fight, and then you still can't kill anyone. Um, so he's definitely not a horrible pick. I just don't think he's the answer to, like, the tank meta unless you play him as a top lane split pushing threat. And we get a Braum ban from Sin followed by Orianna and a Zyra ban from the Chiefs. Yep, I think that uh, this is pretty obvious that they want to be able to keep Raze alive. One of the ways that you punish Cogmore is with a very aggressive lane. Uh, Zaya, Zyra is the aggressive lane of choice coming out of Sin. And we saw it played by them a lot at Rift Rivals. Yep. Fact. Cassiopeia, final ban from the Chiefs. Oh, they ban Cassia. So obviously they feel like this is going to be the support or top lane pickup, depending on where it is. Ejim gives double thumbs up, feeling pretty good today. Cedrani gets locked in for Sin. So, so top lane Choga. Yeah, for Dokla. I uh, still have to see where this Maokai as well as Galio are going to go. Galio mid, Maokai jungle, I would say at the moment. They can Sin. flex the Galio. Swiper played it a lot at Rift Rivals. Lulu Cogmore. Not Rift Rivals, he didn't go there. <laughs> Unfortunate <laughs> burn. Uh, Origin, I meant to say. I Ow. meant to say Origin. Oh, spicy. Spinning on fire here today, Jake Spawn Tiberi. Lulu is locked in as the support of choice. That's fine. Legacy Spawn's allowed to roast the Chiefs. <laughs> uh. It's fantastic. All the Diables players think I'm DW Spawn. <laughs> well, I just can't win. Shut up, you idiot. Come on. I don't know what to say anymore. He, he's, he is a tomato right now. I wish he wasn't sitting down. <laughs> I actually think I've killed my co-caster. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Lulu is picked up here by the Chiefs, as we mentioned. Should be Egypt's champion, but yeah. can be flexed. And Jarvan's the final pick, so it's um, Jungle Maokai, top lane Jarvan. Interesting. Jarvan into uh, Ooh. the Cho'Gath. I think that's not going to be an easy matchup. Uh, all of a sudden, Swipper's pick is a little bit safer because double magic coming out of jungle as well as mid lane means that Galio should be A-OK -okay fishery. Yeah, the only AD damage coming out from their team is from Zaya. I don't know how they kill Rays unless Cho'Gath gets to him. And it's very hard to get to uh, a Cogmore as a Cho'Gath. Yeah, you package into back lines and pray. Well, no, I don't <laughs> think Ryan has got enough damage to kill him because as soon as he does that, Swift is going to dive on him, Wild Girl is going to come out. This is a legitimate protect the AD carry comp. And I think Swiper's job in team fight is to just ult Dokla and hold him still. Hmm. And that way, the Cho'Gath's not going to be able to get to Raze and not going to be able to eat him. And I don't know if they have enough damage outside of that. Very good drafting from Coach Jish. Have to see how Bensel's team composition works I like works the 1-3-1 one, one out of Sin a little bit more, though. Corky going to a side lane. Going to be a legitimate threat at turrets, whereas uh, 
the Galio certainly will not be. So I think that Benzel has a mid-game option of going into a 1-3-1. Trying to get the Cho'Gath, you know, to 1v1 the Jarvan a little bit. Uh, we'll be able to keep him off the turrets. Unfortunately, not an Exhaust Corky, though. Uh, no, but you can't win them all. I think Exhaust Corky actually sucks versus Galio, <laughs> by the way. Uh, that is one matchup I will say. It sucks. Because Galio does no damage. Why do you need to exhaust a Galio? <laughs> okay. I thought you were just going to dive bomb into Corky. Uh, sorry, onto Kog'Maw and exhaust him. I mean, sure. <laughs> Kamikaze style, just into the back line. Yep, you uh, know, you're a new equalizer. Just rumble alt down the line. <laughs> And then you vap the other way. You 100% so could safety. do that, Fish. You want, you, we could play a solo queue after the game after this, and we could go play Corky together if you want, because yep, that sure. sounds fantastic <laughs> to me. But uh, I don't think Ryan is going to be looking for that. I'm a Corky bot lane player, though. Yeah, I know so you are, bot actually. Lane. Cheeky bot lane player. <laughs> I, I've actually got a mean Braum at the moment. I think Corky Braum's one of the Is it a smite Braum? No, it's not. Okay, thank God. Then we can play together. I play <laughs> exhaust Braum You'll actually well. be in the lane for the first I time. I'm an exhaust Braum player. Ooh. For now, though, let's check in with Jish. We're standing by with Serianne. Thanks, guys. I'm standing here with Jish from the Chiefs. Uh, you guys, oh, sorry, Sin picked Trundle, but then you banned Zyra. Were you concerned about Zyra be, uh, Trundle being a flex pick on Sin's side? Yeah, so they had Trundle and Cho'Gath, and both can be played in uh, multiple roles. Um, so we wanted to play Lulu uh, in, with the Hawkmore lane. So we just thought, yeah, um, if they have Zyra, they have like a lot of kill pressure down bot lane, and we just wanted to get rid of that. The desk were talking about FBI and Rogue potentially being the strongest bot lane in the OPL. Would you agree with this and do you see them as a threat in the upcoming series? Um, to answer the second half, yes, I think they're definitely a threat. Um, I think that a lot of bot lanes are good right now. Um, for the last two years, everyone's been telling us that they have better laners than us and better players. Um, and then, you know, we've always done well. So uh, it, means, like, it means very little to me if the desk says that. Um, I have a lot of confidence in my players, uh, but I do think they are a good bot lane. And just quickly, so they knocked you out of the gauntlet and also stopped you guys from going to Rift Rivals. Is there a bit of a friendly rivalry going between you guys at all? all right, just quickly, they didn't knock me out of anything. <laughs> I wasn't there for that. Um, but no, I, cool. think, I think that um, we have like a really good relationship with Rioma, uh, FBI and Juves now. Uh, and not that we dislike the other two or anything. So there's like definitely a lot of friendly banter now. Uh, I don't think it's really centered around like that gauntlet from last, last year. It's more just around my friendship. Well, best of luck and thanks for talking to all us. All right, thank you. Of course, Jish is correct. He was not at the gauntlet for the Chiefs. He was too busy turning the Immortals into a seventh place <laughs> LCS team uh, when previously they were uh, top of the table and now, ever since his departure, have returned to the top of the table. Uh, so, <laughs> correct, Coach Jish, you were with a different team. Mm, Chiefs, unfortunately, they, 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 they've improved. They're now third place, which is great. This game will dictate if they're going to be knocked down into fourth. Uh, however, as we kick things off, now we've got an extended leash. I uh, did pick up his red buff. I believe he got a couple of... Uh, he got a super leaf. as well. He uh, got all of the raids. His bottom lane did the red buff and dragged it into a sapling. He is now level three. And Their bottom lane. lane is level one. He is going to flash oh. twisted advance onto someone. He's going to kill them. Please observe it. Give me it. They're on FBI. He gets locked down. He flashed on top of that one. Exhaust comes out too. That's a dead eddy carry. Give it to nah. Goes over to Spoosh. You could see he had stopped damage, but the sapling was already out. Uh, but damage done. Super Ooh. Leash into bottom lane, and you can see Sejuani, one of the slowest junglers in the game, does it re very healthily, however, is not going to be able to punish at all. Would he have had to take an experience quint for that? Or was nope. just a normal experience That is just enough? a normal, experienced clear. Uh, I know that you can do it on Kane as well. Uh, teams should be very aware that that is the standard path at the moment, Fishy. So already very early first spot picked up by the Chiefs. And, uh, I mean, the desk kind of called Sin the Cheesers. This is two days in a row that we've kind of seen some cheese coming out of the Chiefs esports club, actually. Not so interesting. Meanwhile, the bottom lane for the Chiefs, this Cogmore Lulu combo has the most ridiculous skills. Good move from Dockler actually coming in here. We'll spot out Spooks. He does get his uh, blue buff, however. Now I can team up with Juves and see whether they go towards a top lane game. So they're trying for something, uh, but Dockler has pushed in Swiper quite heavily. I mean,. Trying for something, and they probably succeeded, honestly, Fish, because getting eyes on Spooks after he goes for a cheeky pass, you have to be able to regain control of where he is as a jungler. Uh, and I think that that was the move that allows him to know that he's now passing back bottom side. Um, and will hopefully give FBI the heads up that he needs to be a little bit more passive in this lane. Mm -hmm. Quinn also, sorry, Ray's also started Boots. wonder if that was because of the gank or whether he wants to sustain in lane. Hmm. Um, but 
you would think that, you know, being able to walk up and be able to slap uh, the AD carry would be good. Uh, they're going to meet each other here. Roma's going to get the call up, so Swiffer's going to follow through. Let's see if the Chiefs do turn. Taunt lands onto both targets, but they lock down Spook, so he can't do anything. Kojic Blossom gives him the shield, and uppercut from Swiffer. Yep, so he can some damage. Roma does so much damage. They have to back out. Juice Swiffer charges dead. forward. Swiffer's probably going to die here. Shield comes out of Ooh. Egypt. He goes back in for the Winds of War, and Rogue is going to stop anything else. So another kill picked up by Sin. Yeah, actually, really nice play out of Sin Gaming there. Uh, the Chiefs, you could tell that they didn't know whether they wanted to fight or not. I think it's very fair to say. Uh, they were happy feeding around a lot fish, and that will be their death. They're going for a return gank bottom yeah, lane, FBI though. Yeah, has no sub. There's no way from get out of this one. He's polymorphed, rooted, and knocked back. Going to be a kill picked up onto FBI, or is it? Has to flash for it. Egan will pick up that kill. Spooks, however, in trouble. They can't get in range to get this off, though. Yeah, exactly right. And this is what I was saying in uh, pick fan phase, is that their comp is going to be incredibly tanky. And no one's going to be able to access Rays because Sejuani's going to have to walk at him after the charge. He's a very slow champion. Uh, Rogue isn't going to get anywhere near him after a pillar. And Razor's positioning has been quite good, Fish. It has. For some, for some reason, Sin have a ward in the middle of the lane. Pink ward. Arima teleports back into the lane. He's picked up TP to match the Galio. Makes sense. Uh, there are certain lanes that if you don't take TP on Corky, you just don't get re-access to the wave when you need it. And you also don't get good shot timing. So this is one of those lanes because Galio is going to be able to, you know, continually throw skill shots at you, force you in. And uh, you generally have to back before your package is up, which means that Teleport, probably the best summoner spell in this matchup. Mm -hmm. Cleanse, also another viable option, I think, if you're worried about the game. Swiffer is doing absolutely fine in this lane so far, though. Yeah, uh, the reason that that is is that Juve's got the kill. Uh, and I think that if Ryoma had have got that kill, this would be a very rough lane. You would probably be seeing something, you know, like Boots, Longsword, as well as that Sheen. Uh, not the case, so now he's only got the Sheen pickup, and I think that that means he has to still be respectful of how tanky Swiffer is and how good his wave clear also is fish at this stage of the game. Scary part is, um, Chiefs are now a thousand gold ahead, and the hyper carry for Sin, the Zayo and FBI, falling further and further behind. Yep. And scary. I don't think that this is going to get all that much easier because uh, they're going to continually revisit. Swiffer wants in. He's completely ignoring Juice. He's being chased down by Ryoma as well as Juice. Oh, dead. great trundle pillar from Rogue. He's going to separate from the team. Gets a big taunt and will get the shield from his passive, but Ryoma picks up that kill. Good collapse from Sin. Yeah, you could see that he wanted to get some vision in River and then he wanted to be able to walk towards bottom for potentially an ult. Unfortunately, Spooks isn't there with him. Uh, which means that Swiffer is doing a little bit of just running it down mid at the moment, Fish. Uh, zero two deaths. zero, the two deaths for the Chiefs. You were the one that called him out, was it? Yeah, on the, the LeBlanc play. Yeah, certainly was. He played very well yesterday, however. He did, just quietly. Uh, but that means that there is going to be access to the bottom side jungle for Jubes, and you can see he gets a nice deep ward trying to spot where Spooks comes out. Spooks, however, busy counter jungling top side map. Yeah. He is uh, certainly up he's in going, farm. He's going for a gank. Swipe is doing well against Dopla so far. Pops the Cataclysm. Dopla yeah, does old. have flash, but he's moving further back into the lane. Wants to go for this trade. Ultimate is up for Dokla. He can get the execute, but not enough damage right now. Wants yes. to go back in. Gets good damage. Almost dies, but not enough. Yeah, that was actually really risky coming out of Swiper to move back up because Dokla had flash as well as ultimate. Swiper should have just stayed away from that. Was not going to get much done. Juve's now level 5. Yeah, that's an optimistic gank. The best of uh, All right, cool. So let's talk about Razor's uh, Cogmore right now. We're probably going to see Bork into Hurricane, into Gwinsu's Rageblade, uh, or Ginsu's Rageblade, depending on how you like to pronounce that item. Uh, and then you might see the Frozen Mallet. Uh, if you don't see the Frozen Mallet, he'll probably go QSS uh, into Merc Scimitar. Uh, but it's certainly an item that pros have been picking up in solo queue fish. This is a freeze that's been started by FBI. Yeah, it certainly is. I think that it will be pretty short-lived. I mean, they're doing the right thing, but they probably want to get a shop in as well eventually. And you can see that Cogmore doesn't really mind about it because he can just yeah. sit back and throw R's at the wave. And then, of course, you know, some of the spells are back available for FBI. And they're going to want to eventually get aggressive in this lane. If you're playing on the back foot against a Cogmore, it's a very bad feeling, and I don't think it, it's a way to win a game of League of Legends. Mm -hmm. They're feeling like holding their ground at the moment. Raise and Egypt being very careful. Top side of the map, Dokla's not doing well against Swiper. Before that gank even, Swiper was about 10 CSR. Yes, it was. I think it's uh, not an impossible lane to win as a Shogar, but I certainly think it's hard. Jarvan with Q-Poke plus Tiamat, insta-wave clears. 
And Dokla will struggle with mana, at least early on in the game. Also needs to eat some creeps, uh, which is pretty a big deal because it means that as soon as you do that, you no longer have kill threat, yeah. which means that he can just all in you whenever he wants. So yeah, ultimate on a one minute cooldown. Do a chunk of health in return. It's still one of the best ults in the game at the moment, Fish, but you just want to be able to use it for the six stacks as quickly as possible and then never have to worry about eating a creep ever again. He's a good farmer though, Cho'Garth. His passive just keeps him well topped, topped up. up in health and mana. Red carpet laid down for Tommy there in the mid lane. That sound effect is obnoxious. But you can see that he's now winning the wave clear battle against Whipper, uh, which is pretty nice uh, for the Corky. Super deals with the minions quite well as well in the mid lane. Uh, even a CS there. Big CS lead in the jungle though. Spooks is 53 to 26. Yeah, he got a couple of early kills, which gave him an earlier uh, Barmy Cinder. Also means that he probably would have been able to steal away a couple of Raptor camps, which is, I think, what happened. Mm -hmm. You can see it's level 6 to level 7, so it's not just superficial creep score either. It is certainly an experience advantage at this stage. Uh, see whether it continues to amount to anything or whether Juves can gank his way back into the game, because that's kind of what Juves is known for. Spooks is definitely known to be a farming jungler, pick his opportunities well when he has uh, the moment for it. But Juves, he gets into lane, he kills people. He certainly does. Uh, but as things stand, Sin, Paradise is bottom lane river quite heavily. FBI has been shoved back towards his turret once again. Uh, but they get the Skull Crab as well as some vision down over this Mountain Dragon. Don't think they can really pull the trigger just yet. Yeah, you can see Ejim wants to take away the Blast Plant. So if Sejuani wants to get in behind, has to dash. You can see they have the brush right there, control warded. So they're trying to stalk Juves out. Juves gets two wards to check camps. So he's got all three bottom side camps warded up. However, with the two kills going over onto Zaya early, I think the Chiefs will just be content to continue to play towards their top side of the map because they feel like the job is already done and that Quinn uh, Rays will be able to get towards a good enough late game as it is. This big show is from top side, now moving down towards the bottom side yeah, of this jungle. There's raptors, nothing there. but there's nothing there, Spook. Unlucky. A little bit unfortunate. Uh, you can see that Ryoma hasn't got a blue buff at the moment, so he's struggling a little bit in terms of uh, being able to keep up in mana. See whether that does impact how this mid lane goes because Corky is a little bit more mana reliant than people would think with Phosphorus Bomb costing quite a bit to be able to clear out waves. Spruce is going to continue walking on wards throughout this river. He'll now head back Well, there's just wards everywhere. Both of yeah. the supports have gone very early sight stones. Uh, coin upgrade. You can see even Trundle going for coin. It, it means the item's overpowered. When everyone's going for it, Fish, it means it's too strong in the current patch. Um, and you can see that that means that both of uh, the Raptor and the Wolf Pit are watered. That means that Chiefs are going to know where the deploy is out of the Sin Gaming lineup. And the three bottom camps are watered on the Chiefs lineup, which means that they'll either know whether Spooks is playing top or bottom side. Uh, so both of these teams should have fantastic information about where the junglers are going to be. There's a couple of people I talk to don't think that Coin is overpowered per se, but they think that Spell Thieves and Targets are really underpowered at the moment. Well, that's when you only have three options <laughs> and two of them are the same strength and one is stronger than that, uh, you know, pick the one half of those one with the other. Spooks caught out a little bit here, has to flash away. Polymorph comes out. Don't know Egypt. about that. Spooks wants to re-engage. Teleport, coming, Teleport here. coming to the back lines. Let's see what they can do. Jarvins is well and truly much earlier. Swiper's going to jump in, lands on top of FBI, now using his ultimate and flashes away. Galio joins the fight as well. Juice is very low. So is FBI on the back line. Swiper forces here the heal. Win. But Dokla dies right straight away. Ryoma now wants to get in amongst the fight, but blue buff is taken away by Spooks and Chiefs win that fight. Yeah, they certainly do. So they use a lot fish, but this was a much better collapse. We criticized Ray's for staying in his lane and farming up. This comp revolves around Cogmore being at the fight, and he's been a part of three of the four kills, and one of them, that was in the top lane. He couldn't get anywhere near it. So much better performance coming out of Ray's in a Cogmore matchup is actually up in CS. And whilst FBI has been camped out, uh, Chiefs doing very a very good job of ensuring their win condition is online. Now, 22,000 gold to 19,700. Chiefs would be happy with that play. They could have got a bit more, uh, but settled with what they have. I mean, when you have a protect the carry comp, the trick to winning the game is actually not biting off more than you can chew. Um, <laughs> Swiffler is just taking auto attacks because he's juking you on the spot. Uh, interesting tactic. Definitely did not pay off. Uh, <laughs> so what I mean by that is you've got a comp that comes online at two, three, four items fish. Uh, 
when you get a kill at 14 minutes into the game, sure, you could look to, you know, take a dra uh, drag and take their turret, rotate around the map, you know, or dive further, you know. They got Summoner Spells and Ultimate now FBI, and you can see that Swiper still has Flash available. Maybe he could Flash on him and look for another kill. But ultimately, you don't need that. Yep. What you need is Cogmore to get towards two and three items, and then you just team fight over areas like Baron. And as long as they've got a small victory for uh, Raze and they're moving towards those team fights, I don't think the Chiefs should be pushing the tempo of the game anywhere past that. If anything, Sin are the team that need to start getting FBI back towards an acceleration point of this game. And what do you think of the Cogmore picks? We saw this in the LPL. I think Cogmore is Rivals. amazing at the moment. Okay. I think that if you have enough protection tools, uh, which you definitely do at this point, Cogmore is a very good champion. Mm -hmm. well, some people think it's a trap pick almost. And it's a tanks. Yeah. The other AD carries would do much better. I mean, uh, he doesn't build crit. Uh, he also doesn't have an easy access towards penetration, but he does a lot of percentage health damage. Uh, so I, I think it's pretty good at the moment. Let's see how it pays off. He used to do really well with Hurricane, but now on hit effects do not apply to the second bolts, making it a much Ramp. better item. But it ramps up Gwinsu still, yep. I believe. So even though it doesn't apply, it still gets you... Uh, like, I think it's still a pretty good interaction. Uh, also, just attack speed plus uh, Lulu is like really strong. She's going ardent, you can see right now. Uh, it goes upgraded side stone. I can never remember what the sun is called, uh, but gets the upgraded side stone Sorry. and goes towards uh, ardent sensor really quickly. And I think that that's going to be crucial as this game progresses. Wind speakers, so definitely not the Thunderlord Cog uh, Lulu of old that we used to see out of Egypt. Funnily enough, Ejim played five games of Lulu against uh, Rogue last time in the Gauntlet, so they should be very aware of this. Yeah. And Chiefs have read this uh, bottom lane uh, kind of, you know, ward-heavy style that is happening right now. Yep, they've called up Ejim to sweep away a few of the wards. Ryan has taken away blue buff from the Chiefs, which is Mark. nice. He also got packaged. Oh, cute. It's a very cute play. Uh, do you miss the old Cogmore? The the reworked Cogmore with 5.0 attack yeah. speed? Uh, <laughs> I miss watching people like Deft and Imp play 5 attack speed Cogmore. Because uh, it was just amazing to watch how quickly they clicked. Uh, we're going to actually get a 5-man, 4-man uh, at least, ganked down in this bottom lane, it looks like Fish. They've Potentially. They've got access to the turret. Uh, and you can see that they've got Galio cheating down as well as Maokai there already. This could be a first turret at 16 minutes. Is this the right move from Sin? They just back off so they I don't you lose to. any kills, but they definitely fall, fall behind because of first turret. Yeah, I mean, you fall behind and that's unfortunate, but at the same time, you don't want to give this Cogmore anything else. Uh, nice from Swiffer here. Gets the snare down as well. Swift will jump in, knocks him back. Maokai Ultima stops Rima straight in his tracks. He's got Flash, we'll get out of there, but Spooks jumps forward, slams the ground. Picks up a kill for they himself. Keep going here. They're going to keep going. Juice in trouble. Still has Flash himself, but he can't get out of this. Swiper gets a kill there too. Yeah, exactly right. And this is the difference between having a lot of CC, but some damage, you know, a Jarvan per se, uh, than, not, uh, than just having all the pure tanks. Dockler not able to get there in time. That means the Chiefs now have all the tempo advantage because Sin's bottom lane ran mid. Uh, they don't have a great recall at the moment either because as you can see, three components versus, you know, an Essence Reaver is really bad. Um, and you can see that it's going to be second item Ginsu's actually coming out of the Cold War. So a little Very bit fast. of misread for me on uh, Quinn's build, but I think this is to do with the fact that he feels that only one tank can get access to him at a time at this stage of the game. I also like the Rage Blade second on the Cogmore. Not a big fan of Hurricanes anymore. Ejim, <laughs> nah. he's going to pick up Return right, cool. again. So let's talk about what... <laughs> I think it was... Uh, Chish either said it on social media or to me, and I'm sure he's not going to mind me saying it. Uh, at this stage of the game, when he feels like Ejim is unlocked and will be able to rotate around the map with Spooks, he finds Spooks' sweeper more efficient. Okay. And that's why he... I mean, you have to kill a Trinket slot to pick this up. Um, so they feel like they're going to be either playing around Ejim's lane or Ejim will be mobile enough to get around that they feel like giving it to the support is actually the right move if the support's trinket is on cooldown. Now you can see they used Ejim's trinket to actually sweep out the pit before uh, they started up that Rift Herald. So there is method to the manless. It's not that Spooks can't pick up the buff. I quietly like to think that it's because Spooks doesn't know how to pick up Rift Herald. I know you do, Fish. But unfortunately, sometimes... I want to keep my dreams. No. <laughs> Uh, but Sin are continue to bleed out here as Chiefs has put their AD carry and support top side of the map. That turret is very low. I want to see who wins this split push now, though, because <coughs> Dockler has Tabby's, Righteous Glory, and a Chain Vest. 
Uh, I don't think the Jarvan does any damage to him anymore. The thing for me is going early Black Lever. So if he gets a couple of autos in with the Lance, all that armor's gone. Yeah, true. But he also has like 5,000 health at this stage of the game, I think. What? <laughs> That's a bit early for 5,000 health. Oh, well, he has Goodness. a lot of health. <laughs> uh, you can see that uh, Spooks wants to start up this red buff, but not going to be able to. Now has access to... Ooh, oh, that's, that's the salty. ultimate gone. FBI what needs to be very yeah. careful here. I'm very curious what forced him to blow that ultimate. It looked like it was a Voidus that came out. Yeah, that's... I think that's using the ultimate way too early then. Since they had Spooks wants this red buff. I think you have to actually respect and let it go. They've already taken top lane turret. Yep. Spooks has been caught, but that was a missed flail. Now yeah, they can strange. turn around. Yeah, Chiefs are just going to turn around to fight here. Spooks throws out the ultimate already. The Kitty Cats will slow. continue to charge. They make such an Zone them away. Noise. They're just going to potentially drop Rift Herald mid lane here. Uh, and that means that... Yeah. It was a Void oh. and an ulti fit. Nothing was hitting him, in short. And Rift Herald mid lane means the Chiefs are going to have all three outers. And a Protect the 80 carry comp is going to be up by about 6,000 gold at 20 minutes into this game, Fishery. Yep, that's uh, good. This is a comp that normally fights from behind. Fighting in front so this is a dangerous spot for Sin at the moment. Also, the fact that Rays would now be on two items versus an item and a zeal for FBI yep. on much shorter attack uh, range and with much bigger threats. I mean, if Jarvan jumps on FBI at this stage of the game, Jarvan wins the all in. Whereas I don't know if that's the case with, you know, Dockler or, uh, you know, Juves at the moment. Yeah. Roman will probably still blow him up. A big thing Bork that broken. A big thing that Bork provides with Rage Blade as well is the lifesteal. Yep. So it's hard to kill him. And that's what he's gone back and picked up. So two complete items for race. Oh, he's a monster. He's going to hurt. Literally a monster. He is a monster of a void. He's do you know do you know why he explodes? Why does he explode? Isn't it because he like eats everything and he's like caustic acid in his stomach <laughs> is enough to break it down and then when he dies like it's his stomach acid, acid erupting everywhere and like destroying it. Ah. I read that somewhere and I was I felt really sorry for Cogmore. I just find it really strange that he spits when he's meant to be the devourer. He's giving it back to his opponents. <laughs> and so he should eat. Should them? be eating people. So he's it should be a vacuum. Yeah. <laughs> That was me inhaling air very quickly. They have the sillier skins, so the Chiefs. Meow Kai with Squid Lulu and Butterfly Cogmore. Make it At stop. least it's not Pugmore. Because <laughs> he's going to be attacking very quickly soon, and I don't like the Yelp. You'd have to think how scary that gank is level 3 bot lane. You've got a cat, a squid, and a butterfly running at you. Ooh. Good damage. It's great damage for this stage of the game. That was about four auto attacks, takes Rome into half health. And you can say that the Chiefs, because they're ahead, even though we said that maybe Sin would have the better 1-3-1 in an even game because of the kill threat of Ryoma, uh, the Chiefs have a very good 1-3-1 set up right now. The lanes are all past River, which starts to eventually starve Juves out of the jungle. Yep. And we've seen that kind of all-game fish. 87 farm on Juves to the Rotation coming bottom lane. Dokla is in trouble. And I don't think there is enough damage for a Baron start here. Yeah, he's going to try and kite this one backwards again. Delay time from the Chiefs, yeah, but good knock-up. Dokla's going to fall. Easy kill. Certainly is. Instead, they engage very hard onto Spooks. And Galio jumps in and says, no, you stay away from my jungler. It's a Don't 2v3. Spooks still wants still it. winning. Spooks says, fight me. Swiffer comes in and says, all right, I'll help you out. Gets a taunt. Pulls back Juice. He's going to no rush away. There, however. Good damage. Knockback's too much. The Chiefs just won a 2v3 nearly. Ooh. Good flash from Juice. He's going to walk into the Meow Kite. No! Run from that kitty cat! We'll get back to safety, but that was a scary moment for Juice. Yeah, it certainly was. And with that, they've got access to two turrets as well, Fish. Mid lane turret going to take a lot of damage. Swiffer still has flash, so he's posturing aggressively. Bottom lane, yes. Bottom lane, yeah. Also falling down very low to the Jarvan with double offensive item. And uh, the gold lead just gets bigger and bigger for Chiefs. Yeah. 43,000 to 35,000. And uh, this is the Chiefs that we used to see play the game week in and week out. And I feel like we haven't seen them for a while before this weekend, Fish. Maybe like mid-last split when they started to drop some games. Um, however, this looks like very controlled, very methodical and well thought out League of Legends. They knew when they could attack bottom lane. Uh, 
and pick up a kill on Dokla, which was pretty much free because there wasn't enough Baron damage. They knew that they could turn that gank because it was only FBI, Juice, and Rogue, and FBI does a lot of magic damage, and Adaptive Helm, as well as the Cowl, had been picked up. So there was no way he was really going to be able to chunk out either Spooks or Swiffer. And uh, Sin uh, need to continue to scale up in this one, because they will eventually have the crit AD carry user. So when FBI gets towards four items, you know, IE, as well as a potential uh, armor shredding item coming out, something like a Mortal Reminder, or a Lord Dom. Uh, I think that this game does get slightly better for them, but unfortunately, until it gets there, uh, this Cogmore is strong at one, two, three items. Yeah, I don't, I don't think this game gets better for Sin at the moment. They are really far behind against the team composition. I just don't see how they tear apart. Yep. Doklo and Ryoma need to win a split push against two incredibly fed tanks. All their turrets are taken down. Baron is left to take, and Cogmore rips through that. And I mean, Swiper has read this really well, I feel, because they're going to have two big crit users, and he picked up a Randuans. And Randuans has become a luxury item. It's like, when you were fed, you can get a Randuans. If you're normal, you have to build something like a stone plate. A little bit more cost efficient. But what that means for now, oh, they've caught another member. Going for a fight. They lock down Jubes. He gets melted by Cogmore at this stage. Ray's look at that first. That's gets cancelled by Dokla. Chiefs will continue to fight. FBI looking for some good damage onto yeah. the jungle. Jungle are gone. That means you can start up Baron. Spooks on Maokai. Will re look at how much health he gets back. Swiper stays bottom. He knows Dokla's teleports down. He can yeah. take these turrets if they try to be a bit cheeky. Exactly right. No, they actually don't go towards the fish. You're reading it like a book. Very low risk play coming out of the Chiefs. They get access to the mid lane wave. They're going to clear out the wards. And now they will start yep. up the Baron when they see Dokla has gone back here. And they've got the teleport ready. There's still 10 seconds on Juice. He's not going to be able to get in range. Swiper does the right thing as well. He disappears into Fog of War. He should teleport his teleport now. Yeah, here it's coming. It's in behind all of them. Baron will go down to a thousand health. They're going to burn it. Let's see who gets it. Picked up easily by Spooks, and now Chiefs look for the fight. FBI gets locked inside the arena, has to flash out. Wrestle Sin trying to go for a fight still, but big ultimate comes out from Egypt. Just alone, Swipe has almost been able to take down FBI all by himself. And Raze, free access to Dokla, shreds through the health of the tanks. Easy team fight for the Chiefs. Really nice team fight for the Chiefs. We said the difference between Dokla and Swiper right now is one when he dives a backline will kill the AD carry. And we saw that was exactly the case. Swiper, he fell low, but he burnt the ultimate and both summoner spells out of FBI. And that should mean that inhibitor number one falls in the mid lane. They go take down inhibitor turret. Inhibitor number one, as you mentioned, is going to fall. Package is available for Ryoma. Does not decide to do anything with it. Race, oh, chase it down. Him Trundle, get him. One more ultimate's going to be enough. Can't juke that, buddy. Easy kill. Roma tries to Valky in Valka. Raze flashes on his face, takes a crit for his troubles, and has to flash out himself. Yeah, and I think that Raze, I mean, he burned the summoner spells there. Now Ooh, he's in trouble. He's getting flashed on Roma. Will get shut down by the Corky, but Juice is going to be the next target. The beautiful butterfly has exploded and gets another kill. FBI wants to fight front to back, but he's got no more tanks in front of him. So they take down Raze, but the damage is already dealt. That was four members that fell, as well as the inhibitor turret. Now the middle of the map is busted open. It's a 12, 11,000 gold lead for the Chiefs. And that was without a shot fit. They had just stayed on the map for a very long time, picked up so many kills and Baron. They are going to come back with fresh items and be even more scary. And look at this. I mean, this is a great play from Ryoma. It cuts the team in half. Raze, for some reason, goes aggressive there. I think that's the wrong call. And Juves does have the flank here, so he's able to get the ultimate down. Uh, but Raze stands and delivers. As Frost Ruin loved to say, uh, say, sit and spit. And uh, <laughs> absolutely does a lot. Absolutely tears them apart. My goodness, this game is getting out of control though for Sin. 10,000 gold behind. <laughs> He's going for it as well. He's got his hurricane now going for the frozen mallet. Yep. Ugh, disgusting. You're not going to be able to reach him. Uh, Swiffer has a Warmog's armor. He, for some it's, reason, he wants to be a Sejuani. It's, he's protected by a Galio Ultima as well as three beefy frontline tanks, a Knight's Vow from Spooks. Yep. Arden Sensor Mikhail's from a Lulu support who has exhaust. You can't kill it. Yeah, that's what I said. I think that, you know, there. this was... I'm trying to think of an articulate way. When we... Oh, there we go. Engage onto the race. Yeah, they engage on the Kog'Maw. He's just like, sure, I will stand here and become a turret. Kills one. That's with the help of Swiper. Locking down Dokla. He's going to be the next one to fall. Easily picked up by the Kog'Maw. And Swiffer has kept FBI occupied. 
Now they're going to try and fight on the bottom lane. Clefairy is unkillable. Still takes no damage, gets a taunt only onto Rogue, who's going to fall as well. Straight and through comes the Cogma, pops more ultimates. That's a dead man walking. Two people only left up for Sid. Yeah, exactly right. Now they're going to be able to knock down another turret. It's just the carries left available. And uh, Sin, unfortunately, just do not have the damage to get through this Chiefs lineup right now. They've got two members left up. FBI is going to fall, and that's game. Chiefs will take down an inhibitor and march this creep line towards the Nexus. And I know I said I would not call a game of shellacking if it did not end before 25 minutes, but I feel like 15,000 gold before 30 is as close as you will get, Fish. The Chiefs, they look calm, they look collected, they look completely in control, and they're going to be able to close this one out before 30. The only thing that separates this game from a perfect game is the fact that Sim got three consolation kills, and the Chiefs look dominant for the last day of Super Weeks. They pick up a game one victory in this best three series. That was as one-sided as they come. Parthing out of Spooks on point to get the first kill in the bottom lane. The Cogmore, I don't think Sin saw it coming. Boot start, Lulu support. They completely flip this tank support meta on its head, and it comes out. But that's cheesy from the Chiefs. I don't think Sin would have been prepared for it. And now I want to see that when key components, like you can get rid of Cogmore. Can you play this same com uh, composition with a Twitch or something like that? Uh, I'm interested to see the adaptations, but Spyfall looks happy. Stop <laughs> nodding at the camera. Go talk to your team, you buffoon. Goodness sake. Hang on, for Sin, you'd have to question what the heck went wrong. I mean, I just told you it went wrong. They got path on bottom lane, Cogmore got some kills, and then they didn't have the damage to kill him. Goodness. Thanks, mate. But that's what a super leash does. I mean, we haven't seen a level 3 to level 1 gank bottom lane in a couple of weeks now, but teams were very used to this. If you take Raptors, Red, Krugs, you end up level three, and bottom lane will have only just started hitting their wave. <laughs> and I think that, you know, they, they were not expecting it. But I think that Sin's bottom lane is good enough to adapt to that play. Yeah, they certainly will be. We'll have to see how game number two goes. But before we get into that game, let's send it back to the analyst desk. Thank you very much, guys. Chiefs proving too strong in that first game for Sin, taking it 1-0. And, I mean, let's start openly and broadly and say 30-minute game almost. But is Spawn right? Is it as close as you get to a shellacking? Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't, I'm not, I personally, I don't think the time matters. I don't yeah. really look at time. Like if you win in 15 minutes, if you win in uh, 45 minutes, like if you have a 50k gold lead at 45 <laughs> minutes, I would still happily call that a shellacking. Time's irrelevant. Oh, Time's true. irrelevant. Time's I don't, a flat yeah, circle. Yeah. <laughs> Time's a flat, that's a, that's, okay. Um, <laughs> that's an old thing, sorry. Uh, okay, so, uh, yeah. But they I were think in control from start to finish, basically. They were essentially in control from start to finish. I think that... Sin kind of carved themselves out a little win condition in the in the Corky. Uh, Galio died twice, and they won that that early two v two. So I thought maybe Rioma could carry in the Corky. Corky with items definitely has enough damage to deal with the Cogmore. But uh, Spooks was just really far ahead of Juves. I thought he had some mm. really good early parving, and um, he converted that into a, a good XP lead, and ended up winning a two v two in the mid lane later on in the game. Yeah, that's ultimately what I think it came down to was um. The, the the lead that Spooks has b had built over Juves was um was the was the real difference. Um when it came to who could kill the tanks faster, yeah, they had a cog, but the front line of Chiefs wasn't actually taking damage at all. Mm. Um and, and that all started with uh level three gank in the bot lane. Level that three was, gank, uh, yeah. That was a huge play. Um really nice parting out of Spooks. Um we can see here that he uh, doesn't even have to flash to get on FBI, but uh really uh, the cause for this, I think, um, is Sin lack of scouting. So Sin were happy to just sit in the river, just fan out, be safe. You know, first game of a series, let's not die level one. Let's not, you know, get chunked and have to flash or anything. So they just they just fan out, but they don't bother scouting at all. And Malkai with a super leash clears extremely quickly. The saplings mm. on Wraiths, yeah. um, what happened was they he put a sapling on the red buff. His bottom lane just leashed it till it was low enough for the sapling to kill and dragged it into the sapling. Then he does half of Krugs. Doesn't finish the Krugs, uh, and he's level three before the first wave is even dead. I think it's, uh, it's so incredibly quick. Yeah, it's such a nice strap by Chiefs because um, it, it punishes Chiefs. I mean, sorry, Sin. Sin's yeah. over aggressive bot lane. Yeah. Like they're known to just get a bot lane and then also push and keep you under tower. So yeah. I'm happy that they punished them that. Field. The other big thing here is that Cogmore was such an obvious win condition, um, and they were able to punish. Uh, uh, FBI and Rogue early on. Like, they were able to secure that lead for the Cogmore, and he was never in any danger after that. I think he... I mean, I didn't even see him use his flash until, like, the 25-minute mark just outside their base. Like, he was never scared. He had the yeah. Lulu as well scaling. Easy lane into Trundle. I think... Uh, 
one thing that uh, I think maybe you were saying mm. uh, backstage hangers was that it was kind of impressive that uh, they hadn't used the draft at all yesterday. Yeah, well, that this was kind of something it, they had they pre- they prepared and they just held it, it, it in the until uh, the sin game. It was, so I mean, it was something Jish likes to do, right? He likes to keep his cards very close to his chest, doesn't like to reveal much. But I know in particular, Chuchus, you were very keen on this draft and you wanted to shout out Jish. Yeah, on that. It, uh, it was really nice. As, as Spawn said, it was quite cheesy, but it really. It, I think the Baron, the Baron fight was the real thing that showed, um, displayed their comp. Um, as you can see, Razor's at the back, hitting the Baron. Um, Tommy's on the Tommy's on the top lane, and essentially yeah, a five v five starts out. Um, they all run forward. Raze is completely untouched. Too much of a front line. No one can really get on this Cogmore, and um, the amount of damage that he's able to output. Um, you can see how fast this Joe Gap melts. Um, and that's with the that's with the stone plate as well. So like that's a. That's an that's 8 a or 9k HP yeah. Cho'Gath. Um, mm. And, and uh, what I liked about this comp with the Galio, um, you know, we've talked a lot about Galio today and, and we criticised it pretty heavily, but what I like here with the Galio is they have the Jarvan for engage. Gar- Jarvan builds uh, Tiamat and Black Cleaver. Mm. So it's a little bit extra damage as yeah. opposed to like the Gragas, which we saw at TM. Uh, and they have the huge, the Lulu Cog, just massive DPS from the back line. Um, and if they play front to back, Sin didn't really have an answer. I mean, yeah. they had Sejuani. Right. Sejuani never, should never be able to hit an alt. They had uh, Cho'Gath, who can't do anything to a Cogmore. Corky only has poke. He can, maybe if he has package, he has an option. Maybe to Zaya just is forward. extremely yeah. short yeah. range, 80 carries. He's mm. not going to do it. Um, Trundle, Pillar. Trundle, Pillar is really the only tool they had. It um, really makes me think that they don't have an answer ready for this Cogmore. I, no. I, I could definitely see a ban coming through just getting this off the table because yeah. that, that comp looks so refined. So, w- w- I mean, Sport was, saying this. Sport was saying this as they were coming off the, the cast as well. He's saying, look, if Cogmore does get a ban from the Chiefs, then do they go then to a Twitch? I mean, can, can you see them playing maybe the Callista or something? Like, w- what do you sub in for Rays to play? Uh, I think for Rays? Mm. If they uh, ban the Cogmore. I think this is, one, think cheesy, think this is one cheesy game. I yeah. think I, yeah, I think that they've picked up the one game with this yeah. comp, and I don't think the next game like I don't think it's going to matter if he gets cog or not. I mean, he's very proficient at all the meta eighty carries, um, like Triss, Zaya, Callista. Oh, um, I don't know if he plays Siva, but um, you know he, he's got enough champions in the back pocket that I don't think a cog matter, a cog ban is going to matter. But it's more that they've managed to pick up a, a I don't want to say a freebie, but they've managed to pick up an early win mm, with yeah. the cog comp, uh, and now it's a question of. Will their meta comps be enough to take out one of the next two games? I think that is interesting is Sin will be on blue side now. So they do get that first pick. Um, I'm curious as to if they will take um, a support. They, um, Sin bans out two supports that game. Uh, if they can get Rogue off um, onto something a bit more playmaking, like the Rakan or Thresh oh, yeah. that, they t- that they bans, that would be interesting because that fits into Sin's win condition. Yeah, I mean, that's good for bot lane as well. Uh, yeah. It's harder to gank, harder to cheese. Well, not cheese, but it's harder to gank bot early from red side because you don't have uh, that early clear like what we saw from the Maokai. Mm. Um, you can only do like chickens red, blue bot. That's like the fastest you can do. Yeah. Um, but if, if Chiefs, I mean Ch- Chiefs will probably stick to the banning Thresh. Maybe they have to ban Zach as well. Maybe they don't against Juves. I mean, yep, you know, maybe this is where we see Juves as Kane. Who knows? Uh, I'm not sure. Like champion for like Kane, out. when you're down... You have, it's like, there's like two ways you can go, right? You could be like, oh, we're losing anyway. Who cares? Just pick me Kane. But like, I feel like for Sin, like they said that they were going to be disappointed if they lost this game. And yeah. I don't think that they're willing to risk losing the series 2-0 on a Kane pick. I think yeah. if he is going to play Kane, uh, he'll play it in game three, maybe as a decider. But like, I don't expect him to play it. Look at that. Yeah, that, that's exactly what we're yeah. So that's, what, that, that, that's the graph you want from a, from a Cogmog. That, Absolutely. You, that you, is the perfect, this that is, is the perfect this damage is, graph. This is essentially comp. Tainted Minds is comp. Um, but the AD carry pops off. The AD carry does his job. Yeah, yeah. Um, I uh, I don't think Sim will be too up disappointed about dropping a game one. Uh, this was a very cheesy comp. Yeah, I think they've just been caught off guard. There, I think yeah. they'll reset in the room um, and say, okay, what happened there? You know, Cogmore, Lulu, that was a bit of a problem. Um, it's going to be a lot harder for Chiefs to draft something like this on red side, I think, because they need to ban out. Like there's that, like, you know, red side's a bit more difficult to draft on. We um, talked about the banning out of the great supports, performance from race. banning Thresh, banning Rakan from Chiefs. They they, they force, uh, or they also ban Zara. They force uh, Rogue onto something like Trundle. Yeah. And 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 Sport was saying, look, Trundle's great one v one at the top when you can like, you know, take out a single target. But in Bolt, where there's so many, you know, there's going to be so many tanks around in these team fights. Did you think the Trundle was a, an effective pick there? Well, what Mitch said, um, what Destiny said on the desk yeah. yesterday is that you don't necessarily 
he, he believed that you don't pick Trundle for uh, to nullify a tank or to shred a tank. You pick it because it has a strong early game. Mm. Um, it allows you to push. Um, it was unfortunate because they did get ganked at level at level three. Um, so we never. One. Yes, <laughs> well, they were level one. Um, so we can never <laughs> actually see the Trundle. Uh, Pop Trundle, or yeah, do the thing early. That they but um, that is what Destiny do. said, yeah. and uh, he's the support main. So yeah. I believe that. Yeah. Um, the other good thing about Trundle is the pillar. And the pillar is really good against Cogmore. I mean, if 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 that if that game was even, um, a pillar almost equals a flash if it's a, yeah, a good one every time yeah. out of the cog. Just, just break that down. You mean because the pillar slows, and then that's how you catch a Cogmore out out of well, uh, out, it, out of so position. like you create terrain. So obviously you can't walk through it, but yeah. more than that, it's it slows as well. Yeah. Cogmore having absolutely no mobility spells means that if he ever gets a pillar behind him, even next to him, anything close to a wall means he pretty much has to flash every time. So um, you don't really need to commit to the pillar. So you're not really taking much risk, but you are forcing the flash out of Cogmore, which of course is huge because next time you pillar, he should probably die. But even then, Cogmore not using a flash that you saw until like 20 minutes in means that potentially that trundle pick didn't go the way they wanted it. No, but the problem there is that they didn't have any damage to back yeah. it up. Like, you know, a, a, a pillar isn't threatening. The fact that you can't move <laughs> isn't threatening if, if you can just gonna stand you. still, A, move, and then take your hands off and kill everything. Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, But uh, that's like the theory behind it is uh, is that. Mm. All right. Well, the, the other thing I want to shout out is uh, is, is Spooks and his jungling because I know mm. you you had some very nice words for him early on in the game, and yep. this is him just popping off as we look at these stats. Uh, yeah, he had a he had a, he had a great game. I think um, the big turning point for me as a jungler was uh, I think there was a period in the game where Spooks had access to Juve's topside jungle, and he took his chickens and his krugs, uh, whereas Juve's walked to Spooks' red watered it but then because there was so much pressure on his bot lane he didn't feel comfortable staying in the jungle in case uh the cock lulu collapsed and killed him so he actually didn't even he saw the red was up decided not he just ran, went back to his he jungle ran up, he ran the ramp and then ran back yeah he, no he act, well he ended up walking around the river for about a minute doing nothing yeah um didn't take any of those camps spooks took his whole top side gank top killed him based went and took his own bot side it was went, two levels he was level seven to level five went mid, killed corky went mid killed corky killed the Sejuani as well, I think. That was when they 2v2'd them, maybe? Yes. Yeah, um, so, that so that was... Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was a mistake by Jews, but also it's like a, a byproduct of the pressure that Spooks put on the bot lane early. Mm. Um, and so I thought he had a really good performance that game. Um, I really liked his Maokai. I'm curious uh, if he'll get it again. Yeah. Maokai... I, yeah. Well, it's a lot of priority on it. So I've seen a first pick, and they might first pick it for uh, for Jews this game coming in. But yeah. we do have a tweet coming in. Uh, hashtag I am OPL. It comes from Wifey Valentine. In regards to the mid lane, because we did ask some mid lane questions, who is the most attractive mid laner Ooh. at OPL? Hashtag I am OPL. I assume they in mean OPL? in OPL. They must mean in OPL. I mean, okay. but there's a lot of competition here, right? <sighs> got Swiffer, very attractive man. Who, who do you think, Tim? You've yeah. got me. Yeah. No, he can't. He doesn't count. He's not playing anymore. Look, so if you let him play a game this split, then I'll <laughs> hey, allow him to our, be. Him. He's on our. He's on our roster. I know. I know he's, he's a, a sub, sub <laughs> but he counts. <laughs> if Claire's not playing, then he can. Then he can jump in and be in the comp. Otherwise. I mean, there's a lot of competition. I'd say mid laners generally in OS outperform other roles in terms of attractiveness. Oh, you had mid beast bring okay. up the average last split as well. So, you know. Mid beast, mid that hunk beast. of a man. Ooh. <laughs> All right, this Dangerous is, words. <laughs> I feel like this is a. Uh, is he really a cyber athlete? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, did, no, no, neither of you have given an answer. Oh, I mean. <laughs> You're the mid laner, Aaron. <laughs> uh, I'll give it to Simon Swiffer. Swiffer? Yeah, he's yeah, pretty good looking. He's, good guy. he's guy. wearing a mustache. He's here today. It's sneaky. Is I don't he? think anyone's noticed. Someone tweeted but the mustache me. is longer than the rest of the stubble, and I'm waiting for him to <laughs> shave the rest of the stubble off. Next time you see him, he hasn't said this to anyone, and I reckon he's trying to get it under the radar, but uh, Swiffer's growing a mo. You know, someone someone slid into my DMs last night oh, yeah? and said uh, that Swiffer's beard looks like uh, Luke Skywalker's beard. In uh, in the latest Star Wars there he is. film, yeah, Ooh, I see oh, it, yeah. Tim. Yeah, it's it's I'm telling you, it's coming through. I'm just waiting for the rest to go. <laughs> this <laughs> is the hard. Read. This is the in-depth analysis you you tune into the OPL <laughs> for. Um, no, he's even trying to cover it up. <laughs> he's rubbing it. All right, I believe it is time for this us will to all go soon. <laughs> <laughs> get. Oh, there's a second tweet as well. Hashtag I'm OPL. Let us know your questions uh, if you want. We'll bring it up right now on screen. And uh, at OPL with 715 coming next week. Do you think we'll see the return? Of 80 assassins in the mid lane. That's from uh, Paraki Wins. Yes. 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 Where's the Zeds? Tim. We play Zed. You do play Zed, but I'm just we Triple G, Swiffer. Um, yeah, I have some players in the OPL. I'm very curious as to why Jay Smid and Zed uh, haven't been really, aren't really coming back. Just broadly well, the speaking. Thing about, I, the thing I will say uh, seven point, I, I, 
full disclosure, I don't know everything about 7.15, and if there's a change coming to AD Assassins, then I don't know about it. But what I will say about lethality, the changes, the way lethality works is it does more damage the less armor they have. Mm. So if you think about armor pen, armor pen it does more damage based on how much armor they have, allows you to penetrate the armor, but lethality is better against champions who don't build armor. Yeah. Um, and we are in a tank meta right now where everyone is building ninja tabis and three out of the five members are stacking nice. armor. So the lethality changes looked a lot scarier than they turned out to be. Mm. So you think uh, potentially no more assassins or fewer assassins, you're saying? I guess you have to wait oh, till the... It's tough to say. Like I yeah. said, with 7.15, there might be changes. Yeah. Um, yeah. But right now, the reason we're seeing so many control mages uh, and the like is because sustained damage is king. Um, when you're in tank meta, you've got to play sustained damage because burst isn't going to kill the tank mm. and then you're going to have nothing left and you're going to end up dying. Yeah. All right. Well, sucks. Tw <laughs> tank meta sucks. Tw tweet us your questions about the mid lane. Hashtag oh. I'm OPL or at OPL. But it is time for us to get into our second part of this match. Chiefs versus Sin right after these highlights. The arena has to flash out. Wrestle Sin trying to go for a fight still, but big ultimate comes out from Egypt. Just alone, Swipe has almost been able to take down FBI all by himself. And Raze, three axes of Dokla, shreds through the health of the tanks. Easy team fight for the Raze. Oh, chase down Bundle. Get him. One more ultimate's going to be enough. Can't shoot that, buddy. Easy kill. Rhymer tries to Valk in, Valk up. Raze flashes on his face, takes a crit for his troubles, and has to flash out himself. Yeah, and I think that Raze, I mean, he couldn't have summoned a spell there. Now Ooh. he's in trouble. He's getting flashed on Rhymer. Will get shut down by the core key, but Juice going to be the next target. The beautiful butterfly has exploded and gets another kill. FBI wants to fight front to back, but he's got no more tanks in front of him. He kills one. That's with the help of Swiper. Locking down Dokla. He's going to be the next one to fall. Easily picked up by the Cogball. And Swiper has kept FBI occupied. Now they're going to try and fight on the bottom lane. Luther is uncillable. Still takes no damage. Gets a taunt only on to Rogue, who's going to fall as well. Shredding through comes the Cogball. Pops more ultimates. That's a dead man walking. Two people only left up for Sin. Yeah. The only thing that separates this game from a perfect game is the fact that Sin got three consolation kills. And the Chiefs were dominant for the last day of Super Weeks. They pick up a game one victory in this best three series.